Okay, so let's talk about variables. Variables are a very important part of any computer language. And if, you, if you've been in school and you had maths, you already know what a variable is. You probably remember that, for example, x times y equals z, for example. So x, y, and z are variables. They can be any number or string. So we got to talk about number and string variables in this video. To explain this better in a computer language, a variable is like a placeholder, like a little box where you place something in there and you can change it over time. So we can define variables by doing the following. We can say var for variable, def for defining that variable, then we do a comma and then we do and then we give a name to our variable. Let's just say my var. And you can see that I'm using camel case. Uh, camel case is every time you have a new word, you use uppercase letter. So let's say, but to explain camel case a bit better, I can say this, then I got a new word. So I started with uppercase is, and now a new word uppercase again, my new word, variable, new word, name. So it's a, it's easy to read and this is used in many computer languages. Variable names cannot have any spaces in them. So this is why we use camel case in this case. So I'm just gonna use a simpler name and say my var, my variable. So I'm defining it I'm saying I'm giving it a name and now I'm I have to say what is my variable what what number or a string I'm going to use inside this variable. So if you if this variable is going to be a number you and you don't know what it's going to be you can just say 0 but if you know that this variable variable is going to start as 5 you can say 5. Now I define the variable the variable is defined and it's 5 right now. Now, if you're doing a string variable, and that's a text variable, we say string for text, we have to place quotes in there. If we don't know what the text will be, we can leave it like that. If we have an initial text, we can actually say something. So this is how you define a number var a type variable and a string or text type variable. Now, it's very important that you decide if this is going to be a number variable or a string variable. Because if you use strings inside the number variable, ZBrush will give you an error. You only need to define a variable once. After that variable is defined, you can change its value. And the simplest way to change a variable is by using var for variable and set for setting its value. And with these names make a bit more sense. So my number variable, my string variable. So now I could change my, my number variable to 5 for example and I'm gonna do a button so we can illustrate this a little bit better so I've just done a I button uh, to check my variable and I'm gonna we're gonna first start working with this number variable so I'm just giving outputting a note saying my number variable and if I come here and I check my variable my number variable is 0 it's been defined as 0 so I could put a 5 and it, that would give me a 5. But now after I define it, if I do a var set set my variable, my number variable that I just defined up there to 5, and I save this, and I check my variable again, my variable now it's 5. If for example, now I place this up here, but for example I place it here, down here, and now I say that my variable is 15, and I save this, reload, now it's 15. So even though I defined it at zero and I change it here to five, I change it here to 15 as well. So this is how the computer reads the, the, the code from left to right and from top to bottom. This is the last time I set my variable. So this is what my note is gonna give me. It's gonna give me 15. Now there's a number of ways you can change the value of a variable. Uh, I'm just gonna delete this string variable here. This was just to show you 
why it's important to use to define a variable right away if it's a string variable or a number variable. Well, we we're going to talk about string variables later on. So in this video, we're just going to focus on number variables. And you can change a variable. Let's just use this variable here. You can change a variable in a different number of ways. For example, I can say var set my number variable will now be my number variable plus five plus five. And this is going to give me five because it was zero. If I now say whatever it was plus 10, now it's zero. I'm saying I want my number variable to be my number variable plus five. And then I want it to be plus 10, which means you guessed it, 15. Now, there's another way of uh, working with number variables, other ways actually, and var add, var sub, var dec, var inc, var div, var mult. Var add, I can use var add and say my number variable, and this will be exactly the same thing it was there before. So I'm adding something to my variable. I'm doing an addition. So it's like a plus, it's the same thing as I've done before. So I'm adding five to my variable and then I'm adding 10 to my variable, which will give me 15 again. I can also do deck uh, sub actually, which is subtraction. So I'm gonna subtract, let's say one. So I'm adding five to zero and then I'm subtracting one, which you guessed it, it's a four. Now I also have, before I get to dec and inc, I also have div and mult, and yeah, you guessed it, division and multiplication. So let's say I'm going to add there, and then I'm going to use a div, and I'm going to divide that number by 2, and that is going to give me, oops, exactly 2.5 which is five divided by two. And then if I come here and I say molt, molt, which is multiply, let's multiply it by two. So I get exactly five again, because I'm multiplying 2.5, which was the result of this, and I'll get five. Now, var deck and var inc, uh, this is used in many computer languages, so let dec. So var dec doesn't need a number here. What this does is it's going to subtract one from that variable. So not a good idea to use dec here because that would be, actually, I'll just leave it like that and you see what's gonna happen. We get a minus one because it was zero, I subtracted one, I get a minus one. So var dec and we got var inc as well. And if I do var inc twice, so I'm subtracting, I get minus one, then I, I'm increasing, I should get zero, and I'm increasing again, so it should give me a one. So these are different ways you can work with number variables. Now, this bit here, what is this? Okay, so if I say note my number variable, and there's, and there's no variable defined as my number variable, what I'll get is my number variable because this script will think this is just a string because it's not defined. This variable is not defined. So if I want to make sure I want to ex specify that this is actually a variable, I'm looking for a variable here. I can say var comma my number variable and now it gives me an error says, hey, this variable is not, doesn't exist, okay? So this is, it's good to specify that it is a variable because this will save you a lot of trouble down the line when you start getting to a lot of code. Now the short end for var, to ch make sure it is var, a var is using an hashtag before the name of the variable. But if I do this with the, inside a note like this, 
Yeah, reload. It will actually give me the text value of what's there. But if I do this with an if statement, and I do an hashtag saying this is, I want to make sure that it's a, a variable there. And I reload. Now I get the same thing. Uh, input variable not found. So this is a good way to make sure that you're specifying a variable and not a text and not a string. You don't have to use this every time. And I usually only use this when something goes wrong or something is not working and I can't really figure out what is not working and then I start using this.